All right. So welcome, welcome. This is CCR Liberty in detail. So what we're doing now is uh, basically last week I had Jacob Slama in the Czech Republic and our kind of our HQ. They filmed a video on ADVs. And then the following week, I'm doing a follow up video on uh, the kind of the same topic that uh, Jacob went into, but I'm going to go a little bit deeper. We're doing a live stream. You guys can chat. And then Matej is still in the background. He'll be answering some of your questions and then he'll throw some up on my screen so I can see them. And then, yeah, and we're going to just dive right in. Right. So hope everyone's doing well. Be sure to like, share, and I would say subscribe, but, you know, like and share this video. Um, you know, always tune in with questions. It's good to see kind of our regulars in here and, and hoping we're getting some new people too. And also be sure to tune in to a lot of these videos. We keep them on, uh, we post them on YouTube, on our Twitter, and we have them kind of in our Facebook library. So if you want to find out more details on the Liberty Rebreather and some of the other Divesoft products, we have, there's kind of likely that we made a video on it. So take a look and dive in and make sure you um, kind of get all the information in there that we put out for you guys. I know I like to study and research all my gear and I can't get enough online content. So I hope it's the same for you guys. We like to make as much content for you guys, especially now since we're not, you know, interacting at shows or, you know, diving together, you know, at least we can kind of keep in touch this way, right? Digitally. All right. So what you see in front of uh, me today, I have basically kind of the four different loop configurations that you can have. I looks like my little square is getting blocked out over here on this side. So I'm going to be jumping back and forth between a lot of the cameras today. Get some dead space right here. So uh, what I have here, I just have kind of a regular loop. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about the ADVs. So it's the auto, it's the automatic diluent valve, uh, or also known as the automatic demand valve, because that's essentially what it is. It's a it's a demand valve that uh, actuates automatically based off of negative pressure, um, and we're going to be kind of going through that. So I have kind of just a standalone loop. Make sure that I, I'm showing you guys pretty well. The standalone loop here. So this is the ADV integrated into the bailout valve or integrated into the mouthpiece. We have the ADV that's integrated into the, these are the front mount counter lungs. So I have the automatic diluent valve that is located on the front mount counter lungs. Now I'd like to kind of quiz you guys. There's basically, you can kind of break ADVs into two categories. You know, go ahead and comment what are the categories. We talked about it last week uh, with Jake, but, and I'll kind of, I'll address them in a little bit. But this is the front mount counter lungs uh, with the front mount counter lung ADV. And then we have the back mount counter lungs. You can see that, well, you can't really see from the video, but this is the BOV without the ADV because the ADV is located on the T-piece. So to answer that question that I previously brought up, there are kind of, you can essentially break ADVs into two styles, at least in the dive soft lineup. You have a membrane ADV, and you have a mechanical ADV. Mechanical ADV operates via lever. The diaphragm obviously operates via a diaphragm. So technically, you have the T-piece ADV that's a diaphragm, and then you have the BOV ADV, which is technically it's a diaphragm ADV as well. So we'll go into those in a little bit. And um, we also have, oh, there's a duck in here too. We have, this is the side mount kind of counter lungs configuration with the membrane ADV. Or it's, this isn't really a T, T piece, it's more of kind of an inline piece automatic diluent valve. It's hard to see from this camera, but don't worry, I'll be diving into that kind of close-up camera in a little while. But the reason why we have the counter lungs on kind of integrated with these loops is because the, you, to have the counter lung without the ADV, it's, they kind of work in sync together. Just kind of how the rebreather is a whole, it's a kind of a whole body system. Uh, some rebreathers, uh, they operate with the automatic demand valve kind of integrated into 
through a breather into the, but they always have to be into or adjacent to the counter lungs. Like uh, with each, um, so the kind of the difference of the ADV not being integrated into the counter lungs is in our DOV here. And this one is directly in the mouthpiece. So the reason why I have this guy stand alone away from any counter lungs is because if you do not like the uh, ADV on your unit that you dive in now, our, our BOV is a da has different size uh, nipples to go for other types of loops, say for a Revo, a Meg, you know, whatnot. The, um, so if you want to have an ADV that you can kind of control better here at the mouthpiece, you can have our BOV with our integrated ADV for that type of rebreather. So just kind of giving you guys more options to build the unit to the way that you want it and the way that you want to dive. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into this kind of more close-up camera. We can have Matt behind the scenes. There we go. So looks like I have a little bit of junk in here. If my nose pops into the camera, I'm sorry. But just saving that. So... These are our diaphragm ADVs, our mechanical ADV, and then our other uh, diaphragm ADV, which this is the barrel that integrates into our bailout valve. Now, I, I'm not sure, there we go. I hope you guys can see it a little bit better if I hold it a little bit closer. So this is the barrel ADV that goes into our bailout valve. All right. so. Now, the, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be taking apart some of this equipment so you guys can see kind of the nuts and bolts of uh, everything. And just you can see how these systems work. So our mechanical EDV, I'm going to make try to clean it up a little bit while as I'm filming. There we go. So. This, uh, this is a lever act, uh, lever action, uh, a, kind of a lever ADV. Uh, you can see that when it's in the counter lungs, you can kind of visualize that it's in the in the counter lungs. And when as you're breathing the counter lungs, they're expanding and contracting with every breath, right? So when you're when as you're descending or if you're inhaling, and the in the counter lung bag hits the lever, it's gonna it's gonna cause it to fire. And so it's going to deliver gas whenever this lever is fired. Now, typically the way that we send this, you can see that there's a spring inside. We typically send it without the spring. That kind of gives it a hair trigger. So anytime the bag touches it, it's going to fire. I put the spring on here so that it has a little bit more resistance. So. Now, I'm going to be kind of disassembling this. So you guys can so you guys can take a look and see what makes it go. Now I know this is very exciting. So remove that screw, and I remove this kind of plunger cap, and then I remove the spring. Now you can see here. Let's get her nice and close. This is the lever, and it's it's a little hard to tell, but you can kind of see that it's pretty sensitive. So if this if this guy's right here, every time that bag touches, it's gonna it's gonna fire gas. So it is rather sensitive, but it's also very effective, and it's a simple design. And then we have our inline shut off here. This inline shut off is designed to um, basically enable or disable gas flow to the system. So say you don't want your automatic diluent valve to fire shutting the gas supply will prevent it from firing. So now I'm going to make sure I take these parts apart so you can kind of see everything that goes on. And you can see the little elves that are inside, and they work to make sure you get all the gas you need on every dive. Or maybe they're dive soft ducks. I don't know. I don't see them very often. All right. So I hope everyone's doing good today. If you guys are back at work and watching this during work, make sure that it's 
nice and quiet. You're not getting in trouble. And then uh, if you're watching this at home, thank you for joining us. And then if you're watching this after hours, you know, glad to have you. I'm going to sound like Mr. Rogers in a wonderful neighborhood pretty soon. So we have, so we have this piece here. There we go. And then you can see inside. There we go. Make sure that the camera is, it's kind of a, a Schrader valve right there. And then we have this lever. It's kind of hard to hold it in balance at the same time with the black on black. So you can see it's a foot and a lever that pushes on this guy and it pushes and it delivers the gas. Very, very complicated, very highly, highly technical, highly specialized system. No, it's rather simple, but simple and effective. So if there's any types of problems, it's, it's easier to just replace the whole piece, but you can see that it is pretty simple, pretty straightforward and pretty robust in, in my opinion. There we go. All right. So that's, that is the lever ADV in a nutshell. So I'm going to go ahead and put these screws back on because it's so exciting. So who now, I wonder who can answer this question. Who was the first manufacturer to design a membrane ADV for rebreathers? Go ahead and you can answer that in the comments and then we'll find out later. I'll check and see if we can have the right answer in there. But who was the first uh, manufacturer to design a membrane ADV in line with the T-piece? So essentially a T-piece ADV. Go ahead and submit your, submit your comments and we'll see who guesses it. And what will be the prize? The prize will be knowing that you got the right answer. That'll be your prize. All right. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put this lever back in. Now this is fun to do while on camera. So I make sure that I don't miss or launch anything into the air. may not be able to work out as well as I'm hoping. So anytime you're doing work, the first thing you want to do is you want to have a little, you want to be working over a tray, right? So that in case you drop any screws, you don't lose it into the abyss. Not like how I'm doing, I'm right on the counter edge. And then we have this part right here. So this inline piece, there's three O-rings that are in here. A lot of times if you've got leaks coming out the sides underwater, it, one of those O-rings may be a little bit scuffed. Remember righty loosey, lefty turny? No. Lefty loosey, righty tidy. So just a pretty simple, straightforward get uh, inline system. And then if you look inside in there, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but that's where you see the bottom part of that Schrader valve. And every time the, the plunger hits that Schrader valve, it fires. So very simple, but very robust design. I used the, the mechanical ADV for my front mount counter lungs for years. I, I liked them a lot. It was very effective, very easy. Um, if I wanted to add gas, just hit my counter lung bag and that would, that would fire it. I, if I was descending, you know, quickly, um, it was very good gas had. Um, if I just wanted to have the inline shut off, um, it was no problem. You know, when the, the front mount counter lungs are very nice because they're very accessible right on your chest. So you can hit every, you can kind of hit everything. It's almost as easily accessible as your mouth, just like our back mount counter lung manual add valves located at the mouthpiece of the bailout valve. All right. So that's our mechanical ADV that's used for our front mount counter lungs. Now, our fancy membrane ADV. So this membrane ADV is designed for to be used as the T-piece for the back mount counter lungs. Now you ask, can I put this T-piece on my front mount counter lungs? Yes, you can. Um, but you can also 
uh, we also sell a membrane ADV that's like this. It's designed, it's not a T piece, it's just that basically these two ends are removed and it's just this piece. And it's designed to go right in place where the fr front mount counterlines mechanical ADV goes. Um, if you wish to have a diaphragm ADV. It's another simple design too. Now I'm going to make sure I have all my tools that I need. All right. So um, when you purchase your Liberty Rebreather, you'll have a bunch of different, um, I call them jigs, kind of like from woodworking. They're little tools that help you uh, work on your equipment. Um, so what this is designed to do, you have this, uh, you have this retaining cover, this guy fits in right in there and then you unscrew it, lefty loosey righty tidy, and then you can dive on in. And then we have our, so we have our retaining ring. Then we have another retaining ring that's designed to hold the diaphragm in place. Now you can see it's got that nice dive soft logo and it has our, uh, membrane ADV, our membrane or our diaphragm for the automatic diluent valve. So you always want to check and make sure this guy's in good shape. There's no leaks. Um, it is possible that if you have the inline valve shut off and you're using your side mount unit as a bailout rebreather and you do not add gas as you descend, you could cause a, a vacuum where the diaphragm could potentially tear or collapse. Um, and flood the unit. Um, but you, as you're descending, we always want to make sure that we're adding gas, that we're equalizing the pressure as we're moving. You know, with using a rebreather as a bailout rebreather, there is additional test loading. So this is something that's a factor in part of training. So we have our diaphragm. And then we have this very simple um, lever Oh, the specific word for this escapes me, but it's um, the liver gas delivery barrel. Okay, um, so instead of removing this guy, which we can do, but I'm just going to have the piece right here. So this is our um, uh, this is the gas delivery system that's part of the automatic uh, diluent valve. Here you have. It's identical to the way that a second stage regulator works, just like Matt's saying, kind of in that little marquee down below. Um, that's the benefit of the diaphragm ADV. It's designed from a second stage regulator, very straightforward. As the pressure vol as the volume, as the gas loop volume decreases and you have negative pressure, it causes the diaphragm to contract with the negative pressure and it fires uh, this lever and it delivers gas. So I've had people in the past ask me if you could increase the flow or decrease the flow. You cannot. This is the flow restrictor. That It's an insert that goes inside. It's basically one dia size diameter um, that dictates the gas flow in the system. Inside, you can see it's just, just like a second stage regulator for all our service techs and scuba techs out there. Um, this lever actuates the spring or the spring has tension and the lever kind of opens it and that allows the gas to flow in and be delivered all right pretty straightforward and then so the second piece of our is, is this, so we have the same kind of uh, we call these the banjo assemblies. Um, this is it's at a, this is a right angle that screws in directly into the lever barrel of the of the ADV. Just like with the other components, we have our gas on. Uh, we have our inline shutoffs here as well. So it you do have the option of whether or not you want you choose to have an inline shutoff or not. Um, the reason why we give that option is because um, some divers like choose to uh, be able to control whether or not their um, ADV is firing. Now, if you're diving the unit in side mount, a good example right here. If you're diving the unit in side mount, 
is you're going through a restriction and then the ADV side, the uh, inhale side becomes the lower lower part of the lowest part of the unit in terms of hydrostatic pressure, you are going to have a negative pressure volume because the, all the gas flow is going to move kind of to the highest point, right? And so that may that will cause the gas to flow slowly. It's going to just kind of trickle in with that hydrostatic pressure. So some people like to cho choose that are in that orientation often, they choose to have an inline shutoff, whether or not they want to close it and basically add gas to the loop manually via the manual add valves. Um, in other times, we also sell it without the inline shutoff because there is the chance that people will have it shut off without um, that they choose to and they get task loaded, they start, they begin to descend and it causes a negative pressure without any additional gas, without any gas being added on automatically. And so um, that's why you see that option on our configurator online. I personally, I keep my ADV open um, the majority of the time, especially in side mount. Um, but I choose to have this inline shut off, on and off, um, the same with my students. But I tell them that that's part of your pre-jump checks is to verify that your ADV is firing. Cool. All right. So let's rebuild it. Now, the only thing that I can't remember at the moment is what orientation does this dive saw fish should be? Should it be like this? Is it going up? Is it going sideways? I'm not sure. But you can do it to whichever way you're diving, right? So side mount looks perfect in that orientation now. So I want to make sure that I'm nice and flush with the top that I don't have any thread showing or sticking out. Everything on the on the rebreather is two finger tight. There's nothing on the rebreather that we're putting a ton of torque on. All right, so we have we've done our mechanical ADV, our diaphragm ADV, and then now we are gonna get into our bailout valve ADV. So what you see here is our BOV with the ADV. So um, you can see that it has this additional piece on here. This additional piece is just a, um, it's a knob extension. It's it's simply just a piece that kind of screws in. A lot of, it's, it's pretty handy for folks that are wearing very thick, heavy gloves, um, but it is, removable so if you wish to have this added on to your uh, BOV you can have it added on with the ADV the way that we do it is just with a very very big screw and it screws straight in there we go so you can see here this knob extension device boom and it goes on it's pretty nice it adds for a, a significant amount of to additional torque um, but Personally, I don't dive it because um, this was, we have this, and then now we have silicone O-rings and um, the lubricant that we use on there uh, gives it a good, nice and work. But a lot of folks like to have that lever, right? Right. So to show kind of, an, um, now this is really nice because we have the silicone O-rings on here and you can see the different, how many O-rings and compartments are on the barrel. The only the way to get to this barrel is we remove this retaining ring, and then I can pull the barrel right on out. So what may, so the ADV portion of this barrel is the diaphragm. I'm gonna make sure that I'm on the camera. The diaphragm right here uh, in the uh, barrel. So th within this now. The way that, uh, and then we have this opening here on the side, and inside you can kind of see some of the, the spring. And I'll give you kind of like a little bit of a side-by-side -side so you can see what orientation is in play with the barrel, with every rotation. So right now, you can see that it is in the uh, open circuit position or the loop is closed. And in this, and then once we rotate, now the loop is open 
and the ADV is active. You can see that loop, uh, you can see that you have this opening here that it has access to the gas being delivered from the diluent valve, from, from the diluent cylinder. So the ADV is open. That means if there's a negative pressure in the loop, sorry guys, trying to make so you guys can see. So if there is negative pressure in the loop, the ADV will fire. Um, you'll feel a little bit of vibration that comes from the diaphragm vibrating when it fires in the loop. Um, sometimes if you're out of the water, it may honk a little bit. That's okay. That's normal. And then we push the button and then we rotate it again. So now is the system, is the loop open or closed? The loop is closed. So that means I can take the loop out of my mouth, my bail out uh, my BOV second stage will will allow gas to come through you can see that opening is open that's facing straight down and then I'm going to continue to rotate so now we can see here that the, the, this opening is closed so that means our ADV is off but our loop is open Okay, so this is, uh, the loop is open. We are breathing from the loop while the ADV is shut off. All right. And then I'm going to push the button, rotate one last time. Now I'm back to where I started. I am in the closed position, but my ADV, I still have access of gas from the ADV. So that means that loop volume is going to be maintained. And my bailout valve is still delivering gas because I have this opening right here, right? Cool, yeah, great, awesome. Awesome, okay, hope that, hope that was an exciting and interesting discussion. Now the pieces of our ADV in our barrel, make sure that you guys can see in the camera. So we have a screw that's located right here in the, in the mouth um, or in the barrel. This is our kind of diaphragm adjustment. If you loosen it up, all as maximum as you can, uh, the maximum you can, then you'll be able to, you're going to undo it and it's going to look like this. So we have our valve right here. You can see it's a big cone. Okay. Now, if you look inside, you have a basket. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this out a little bit, try not to break anything. Okay, so you can see inside there's a basket and then there's another an additional spring in there and that basically what this does is it dictates the tension that's on, that's on the diaphragm because the diaphragm screws in on this direction okay, uh, outboard it screws in uh, and that allows kind of the, the breathing resistance of the ADV. So if you undo it all the way and you remove that piece, then you have to remove this basket, which is kind of a pain in the butt. And then there's some other pieces inside that you need to make sure are lined up properly in order to reinstall the ADV. So it's not a terribly complicated system. It's just a good amount of work. Um, inside the wall of the barrel, uh, there is an O-ring that has to go on the outside, uh, the outside between this plastic piece and the barrel wall. That's a fun O-ring to put back in once it's been removed. So technicians only should be servicing and working on this types of equipment. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, any, uh, if your equipment needs any types of servicing, always be sure to send it to your dive soft technicians. Uh, we are located in Tampa Bay, Florida in Largo, in the city of Largo. So nice and close. And you guys can always give us a call and send us any of your equipment that needs any servicing. All right, and I'm back on the big camera. So I think we kind of covered a lot of uh, everything on the ADVs. Hopefully you guys can now put together your own ADVs blindfolded after this class, right? Um, very happy you guys could join us. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, comments, concerns, always be sure to send us an email who is behind the ADV. Also, which manufacturer invent, um, designed the first membrane ADV that was for a T piece? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Dive Right. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Optima, the, the, the first Optima had a membrane T piece ADV in there. 
now I'm working right off of memory, so you know, could be wrong, but let's see. It looks like there were some comments in there. I kind of missed them, but um, yeah. If you guys have any other questions about ADVs, comments, concerns, uh, which is the one that I dive? I told you guys a couple times, I'm a big fan of the T-piece ADV, um, but I've used both. Uh, I enjoy them. I like them a lot. Um, you know, um, any questions, comments, concerns? If you guys have any services, any if you want to become a dive soft technician, uh, we can see if that's possible. Always give us a call. And thank you very much. Be sure to tune in uh, this Thursday. I have Gareth Locke, the author of Under Pressure. He's going to be joining me for our Dive Talks Live. That'll be a good one. Uh, I hope I hope to get a lot of questions from you guys. Uh, he'll be great to talk with. And then next week, we have another episode of our CCR Liberty in detail. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.